All right, guys, we're live. Every day, we're going to make chocolate and blueberries and muffins. So let's get started. Yeah. So I am the washer, but look at these. These are tools. It's a mess wash, but I'm going to wash these, but I already have. Are those, the t are those the tools that we need to these, use? These are the tools we need to use. Hey, guys, bye. Where are you going? Home. Hey, Jacob is watching. Are you going to say hey? Hey, Jacob. Welcome to our channel. Hello. Hi. <laughs> All right. Um, we are going to be making blueberry cream muffins. And, Maren, can you stand so up so you can help me? Let's get started. This makes me dance. <laughs> I love that this makes you dance. And All right. This is so, blueberries. yes, we're going to be using blueberries and white chocolate chips today. This is a recipe from Christina Tosi. So, if you haven't checked her out yet, you should. Um, but we are going to be talking a little bit about the muffin method. Okay. So, muffins are a type of quick bread. Um, meaning that they use a chemical leavening agent like so baking soda started. or baking powder. And so uh, we are going to be making some muffins and Marin is going to be helping out as well as Edie. Um, as long as Marin decides that it's go time. Here she is. Sous chef in charge. All right, so I went ahead and did all my mise en place beforehand. If you don't know what mise en place means, mise en place is no. a French term. It means no, everything no, 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 in its no. place. No, so, that's not hers. so I did that beforehand, just making sure that we had everything ready to go. It makes the no, process a lot easier, a lot smoother. But first, what we did is we washed our hands. So in true safe food handling fashion, um, everybody washed their hands. And Edie is eating an apple, so I'm going to move that. <laughs> okay, so um, with the muffin method, the way that this works is we are going to take all of our dry ingredients. Edie is drinking out of a measuring spoon. <laughs> See? All right, um, we're gonna kind of shift our focus this way just a little bit, okay? So what we're gonna do is we are gonna take all of our dry ingredients and we are going to combine them in this mixing bowl. So I'm gonna shift you guys down just a little bit focus-wise so that way we can make sure um, our demonstration is going to be solid for our students. So our original recipe yields six muffins, which I'll get you guys a copy of this recipe here in just a moment. Um, but our original recipe yields six muffins. We are going to double our recipe to make sure that we have enough for everyone to enjoy. And Maren's going to keep eating. Uh, this is also not made for commercial purposes, so we don't have to be as concerned about cross-contamination. Um, however, if you were making this from a commercial standpoint, you would want to make sure that you aren't eating your product as you're going along. Here we go. All right. So we are going to go ahead and add our three cups of flour. So the original recipe calls for one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. We are going to add three cups of flour because again, we are doubling this recipe. Um, so three cups of flour, we're gonna go ahead and add this recipe, like I said, it calls for a chemical leavening agent. So our chemical leavening agent is going to be baking powder and this actually also calls for baking soda as well. So since it calls for both, I went ahead and measured out this is our baking powder. It calls baking for powder. one and a half teaspoons. I doubled it, so I actually put in a whole tablespoon. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that. And it doesn't matter how we add it for right now because we are actually going to take a whisk and we're gonna add some air. Um, instead of using a sifter um, or a sieve to kind of work all of these flour or our dry ingredients together, what we're gonna do is we are going to use we are gonna use a whisk to add that instead. The reason why anytime you're making a quick bread, you want to be able to incorporate those dry ingredients together really well, um, so that way they can hang out and you're not gonna have lumps and bumps of one thing or another. We wanna make sure that they're all incorporated really well. So we have our baking powder, and then we also have, I believe, let me check real quick. It's a half of a teaspoon of baking soda and a half of a teaspoon of salt. So again, equal amounts are in here, and I'm gonna go ahead and add those to our dry ingredients as well. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna put up our white chocolate chips for just a second. 
<laughs> this is the best part of baking is the fact that they just eat as we go through it. So it's fine. Again, these are going to be enjoyed by our family. So um, I'm going to go ahead and take this whisk. And again, you'll see since this is a wire whisk, it works its way through without mashing, without compressing, compacting. But we're just going to go ahead and go through this. Bam! Bam! And we're going to kind of make sure that it's all combined really well. So I'm just going along the perimeter of the bowl and then just moving it through the middle. So you're gonna see that our mixture is now nice and light and fluffy and all of our dry ingredients are combined. Okay, I'm gonna get a separate bowl to add in our wet ingredients. So, pause for the house. And thank you for joining us again for this demonstration. Um, we are full remote in Wichita. So lots of things that we're doing are online and virtual. So I figured this would be a great way for us to um, do some demonstrations while still being able to be involved in the kitchen. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and preheat our oven to 375. So then as we're adding all of our ingredients together, um, we can make sure that that is happening in the background. So I'm going to get that started. Edie, are you going to sing us some songs while we do this? Uh, Alright, so in a medium bowl, we're going to whisk together our eggs. It calls for one egg. We're doubling, so I have two. I'm going to let Marin crack our eggs. Okay, first of all, whenever you crack an egg, you want to make sure that you always crack it on the surface. Okay, gently. Give it another hit. Another hit. Because if you crack it on the side of your bowl, there's a lot more possibility that you're gonna get eggshell in whatever your product is. So crack it on the yes, yes. counter. No. Go, go, go. I don't wanna eat it. Keep going, keep going. Don't be scared. See, I'll show you. I'll show you first, okay? We always need a good example first. All right, hopefully this is a good example. All right, and then we just open it up into our bowl, okay? The peas are all gone now. Good yeah. job, Marin. Excellent. All right, Edie, coming at you. <laughs> okay, so we've got our egg. Bully dough. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and add in our sugar. So it calls for a half cup of sugar. So this recipe is going to have an entire cup of sugar in it. So good stuff. A lot of times too, whenever we're using sugar in a, mm -hmm, whenever we're using sugar in a, a recipe, a lot of times in baking, sugar is included within our wet ingredients. They consider it a wet ingredient because of the fact that it usually is being creamed together with something. It gets added with our wet ingredients. So when we're using egg and sugar together, again, it might be considered a wet ingredient. And then we need to add in our milk which it calls for a quarter cup of milk. So we've measured out a half cup of milk. Come here. The are gone now. Our half cup of milk. Good job. And then it also, this recipe also calls for a quarter teaspoon of vinegar, which I use apple cider vinegar, and a quarter teaspoon of vanilla or a half teaspoon of vanilla. So I have one teaspoon of vanilla extract in here and then I've got a half teaspoon of that apple cider vinegar. So go ahead and stir it gently, 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 gently. See, it's what, these are liquid ingredients. We need to make sure that we start slow and kind of move from the middle. Move from the middle. You wanna get those egg yolks kind of broke up if you can, good job. likes to be on camera so I wanted to make sure she got her love too all right so what I'm gonna do is again I'm just gonna take it and, <laughs> and I'm gonna mix it so that way it's all all of our liquid ingredients are together 
Now, of course, on this recipe, it calls for, let go for just a second, please. Um, it calls for our dry ingredients kind of as a secondary piece, but since I wanted to use my whisk to kind of incorporate those ingredients and make sure that they were all hanging out together, um, I made sure I measured this out first so that I could use my dry whisk to go through and get that taken care of. You're trapped? Where are you wanting to go? Where are you wanting to go? Do you need to go somewhere? All right. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to actually create a well in the middle of my ingredient, okay? So the way that you can do that, there's a couple different ways you can do it. But if you think about a well, it needs to be almost a hole in the middle of our ingredient, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take and try not to compress it too much, but I'm gonna just kind of try to create a little bit of a space for our dry ingredients, okay? Or sorry, for our wet ingredients to go into our dry ingredients. So you'll see that there's a little bit of an, uh, a well. I've separated that out so then our wet ingredient can add into that. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that into the middle. Actually first, pause. So where did the blueberries go? Oh, never mind, they're over here. So what I'm gonna do first, okay, I have one cup of fresh blueberries here. Now it's good to use fresh versus frozen and I'll tell you why. So the membrane of a blueberry, the outside, the skin, right? If we take this blueberry, all right, and we add, we freeze this, what's gonna happen is it's gonna form ice crystals on the outside. And those ice crystals, the points Ooh. and prods of those ice crystals could actually pierce the membrane of the skin on your blueberry. So then when you add them into your, I've got somebody helping me out, eating some, um, but then when you add them into your muffins, yes. and then where's the other blueberries at? They're over there. Um, make sure you grab from, from those because we already had these measured out, okay? But when you add those to... <laughs> that was eating. Uh. <laughs> when you add those to your muffins as they bake, uh. they'll still taste fine. They'll still um, you know, have the same texture, all that sort of stuff. But what's going to happen is then since that skin has been pierced on your blueberry, it may actually leach into your muffin and kind of turn it like a weird green color. So if you're looking at it from a standpoint of like the aesthetics of it, okay, um, you might want to... Um, <laughs> you might want to use fresh, not frozen. Okay, so, and now another little trick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my spoon that I used to just kind of create my well in my product, and I'm gonna take a spoonful of this dry ingredient, and I'm going to toss it through my blueberries, okay? The reason why I'm doing this is because a lot of times when you're making a blueberry muffin, what happens is all of your blueberries sink down to the bottom, okay? Um, so when they sink down to the bottom, you kind of have, it, they all compile in one spot. So if we do this, what happens is then this flour mixture is going to kind of act as a, almost a Velcro inside of your muffin. So it's gonna hold it to the interior of that muffin sort of where you want it to be instead of everything kind of going down to the bottom. So that's just kind of a, a fun little trick to know about. So here is our blueberries. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in our liquid ingredient to that well. So you'll see, it kind of starts to just hang out there in the middle. Um, and so I'm, my well probably wasn't quite big enough, but it's still okay. So we're gonna go ahead and add all of our liquid ingredient to our dry. Don't ever add your dry to your liquid. Always add your liquid to your dry. Um, and then I'm gonna take my whisk and I'm gonna just kind of start to incorporate without over mixing that liquid to the dry ingredient. Marin is showing you some artwork she did. Edie, will you stop eating our blueberries, please? I would also probably recommend, this is something that, you know, it's a trial and error situation. I would probably recommend using a uh, rubber scraper to do this versus a whisk. Lessons learned. Lessons learned. Um, we also need to add our recipe calls for one cup of vegetable oil. So I'm going to go ahead and add that in. And now all of our liquid ingredient is there. And I'm going to grab 
This is why you shouldn't use a whisk. Yeah. Learn as we go. Will you grab me a rubber spatula, please, Mary? What's a rubber spatula? Oh. Do you know what they are? Mm -hmm. This is a rubber spatula. Mm -hmm. We could also call it a scraper if we wanted to. All right, so I'm going to take it, and this is like a tiny little baby one. It'll still work out okay. So I'm gonna take this and just make sure I get all of my product incorporated. This is also, okay, when we're talking about quick breads, there are different consistencies to our dough that we need to be aware of, okay? Um, yes, aware. So for example, we've got, this is more of a stiff dough, okay, or a drop batter so with it being a drop batter what that means is we can drop it we'll drop it into like our muffin liners or into a cupcake pan or muffin pan muffin tin just depends on what you want to call it um so i have our ingredients all mixed here together okay and then what i'm going to do is i'm now going to fold in my blueberries and then this recipe also calls for some white chocolate chips so i have those measured out as well so I'm gonna go ahead and fold these in. Uh -huh. And we are folding in because we don't want to break those blueberries, but we still want them to be able to get in here and hang out together. All right, so let me go ahead and add in. Mary, will you come help me fold these in? Or do you wanna scoop them into the muffin tin? All right. Do you see all of that put together? Yep. So we've got lots of chocolate chips. We've got those wonderful fresh blueberries. If you wanted to do a different kind of add-in, you absolutely could as well. If you wanted to do like cranberries, if you wanted to do, um, you could even do like just chocolate chips if you didn't want to do like any kind of berry. But right now is a good time to be doing this kind of stuff. All right. I don't like blueberries. You don't like blueberries? No. You like fresh blueberries. You just don't like them in muffins? No. All right. Well, that's okay. See, I don't like those little itty-bitty blueberry muffins. Okay. So, what we're going to do now is I have a muffin tin already, so I'm going to shift Marin over here because she's going to scoop them into our muffin tin. And if you are like a true purist, you would never use a muffin liner if you were making, or a cupcake liner if you were making muffins, but I don't like the mess. Um, muffins tend to be messy. So I want you to scoop, get those in, and then scoop it into our muffin liners. I use that for ice cream. You do use it for ice cream sometimes, don't you? Can I help? You can help with some. Ooh, hold on. <laughs> Here, do you remember how these work? This is a portion scoop too. I would suggest if you don't have, they also call these like a, what do these call? What do they call these? A disher. This is also called a disher. But if you do not have one of these, you can also always just use a spoon. And um, this is why this is called a drop batter. Okay, hold on. Just a second. Okay. Um, this is why this is called a drop batter because we can take it and we just drop it into the muffin liner. And if you have an eight-year-old helping you, she gets ambitious and just does it herself. Um, you also can take some of those blueberries and you can kind of set them on top if you want to just save them back. You can set them on top as well. So we're just going to go through and we're going to fill our muffin tins, our muffin liners. They need to be up to about... I would say about a third of a cup of the batter into each muffin liner, okay? And then the batter's gonna level up right under the lip of that liner, and then when you bake it for about 18 to 20 minutes, it will be how you need it to be. Okay, let's use the other scoop so that way, because it kind of gets stuck. It's right there. Scrubby, scrubby. I miss you so much. All right, so go ahead and go through and fill the rest of those liners for me. I did too much stuffing, but I am great, I am so, I am great, I am so great and so great and so great. Edie, are you singing a song about being great and strong? Uh, yeah. I like it. Here. Oh, that one's probably.
probably pretty full. Sometimes we get a little over ambitious. We'll just move it to somewhere else. And we hope that these and we hope that they turn out the way that we need them to. Let's give these a little bit more love, huh? Wait, that one doesn't have blueberries. I know. Here, maybe we should just like poke that one in there. These are gonna be like some killer muffins. They're gonna be tasty. These ones only have two or one. So we're just gonna go through and make sure they all have the appropriate amount. Uh huh. All right, like I said, these are gonna go into the oven for 18 to 20 minutes. And then um, we will show you guys kind of the after when we are, we're done with that process. So thank you for those of you who are uh, joining us again today, um, taking your time to watch. Oh no, And to be continued. All right, Edie, say thank you and say bye. What are you doing? Thank you, Miss Bye, Bye, Doobies. That was it. No! Don't do that. Oh my gosh. All right. See you in a bit.